everyone. Welcome to a very unusual, but I hope uh, an episode of Faith Greater Than Fear that you'll very much enjoy. You've seen both of our faces or heard both of our voices during the course of this series, but never together. Um, so we hope, uh, we hope as we kind of close out the year for Faith Greater Than Fear, we can kind of just take a look back at the past year. We all know there's been a lot that's happened. It's felt like maybe a, a very long year in, in some ways, but we also think there's a lot to be uh, thankful for. And so I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and introduce him, but you all know who my my guest is, and maybe we're guests of each other here. This is Mike Schrage, president of GMPI. Of course, I'm Nathaniel Dunn, vice president of international operations here at GMPI. So Mike, how are you doing today? Doing very well, Nathaniel. Thank you for sitting in the director's chair. Well, happy to do it. You all at home probably will not be surprised to hear that we actually are in the same building here, but we're just keeping with this uh, Zoom tradition that keeps that good social distance or physical distance as we've uh, expressed several times during this series. That's important during these days, but we're just going to uh, talk to Mike a little bit about what it's been like hosting this program. I've done a little bit too, but just that experience and, and look back at some really key things and, and memorable things over over the years. So Mike, what's your experience just been like as, as host of this program? Well, in a word, Nathaniel, it's been an honor. Um, you know, it's been an honor to talk to people that have really good faith in Jesus, uh, in what he's doing. And, um, you know, we've together journeyed from March when we did this pivot. We didn't know if it last a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Here we are at the end of the year and it's still going. And um, it's just been cool to see, I think, 77, 76, 77 episodes that you and I have done together. And so honor would be one. The number of volume of responses uh, everywhere from people in the hundreds to a few, I think, hit a thousand or so. Uh, so that's been some of the cool stuff to see God use it. Right. And there's been such a wealth of people to ask. I mean, maybe at some point we thought, well, how, how could we ever ask 70 people to do this? But I don't think it was actually ended up being that that hard. And uh, I can I can agree with the handful that I helped uh, host. It was an honor, particularly for me to talk to some people, uh, people I've known for a long time, um, to hear about their experience during this uh, pandemic and and really, though, the wisdom that they're that they're taking, uh, taking away from it. What for you were some of those really, uh, really memorable interviews or maybe even some finer points within those interviews that you come away with? Yeah, you know, I made a list it's because there's so many of them and I don't know that we'll cover them all here, but uh, you know, you Nathaniel, I guess right from the get go, it was just a God thing to have had the opportunity to talk to the founder of GMPI, Zai Nutt. And uh, his was so popular that we actually did it twice, you know, and uh, it's because of the reminder that he sent very, I think, providentially in the early time of the lockdown <clears throat> that said, people, don't fear. Uh, my generation, when I was a young man, uh, we've been through this. We've been through all kinds of things from different kinds of pandemics to world wars. Uh, we have seen it all and we've survived and God has been through it. And that has really, I think, set the tone so much so that we wanted to have him on again. But it's been cool to have, I think, the opportunity to talk to friends, to talk to colleagues. You've done some of those that we've talked to our colleagues within the walls here. Uh, some of the international people that are in our network and get that international perspective. So it's easy to forget that when you're hurting in a way, uh, the hurt's all about us. It's all about our country. And we're going, there's a big world out there, seven plus billion people. And we all went through it at the same time. And that was a good reminder, I think, to me and to us. And then to go with people who were family members, that was a real sweet opportunity and doing teammates, as I mentioned, but even teammates that I formerly uh, got to serve with when I was a missionary in Kenya. Uh, and you as well, yeah, through some connections you had. So those are some of the highlights of just the people that I got to talk to. And I think starting it off with what Zayden had emphasized. Yeah, I think what you just mentioned reminded me of one of our uh, most recent guests, what he said, you know, this in a way has been one of the most unifying times because we're all kind of sharing the same pain. I think that was 
Sergio Rizzo that said that. That that does really resound. Uh, now, Mike, I know behind our kind of uh, the curtain of this program, you often mention that there's always one particular thing that happens during the course of the interview. And would you would you share a little bit more about uh, how you phrase that and what that is? Yeah, I, I wanted to list all 70 some, right? And we just can't do it for length of the protein program. But uh, some of the profound elements, I think, that, that hit me, and I just wrote a few, was, you know, there was these insights from young people. I think of Florence, Lydia Florence, that brought in those things that she had uh, understood. We had during the cultural uh, elements during the Black Lives Matters uh, issue that uh, was in our country as well that some people brought up that were really close that those um, African American brothers brought some things to to light I didn't I didn't know I don't live in their shoes you know uh, I, I I just so appreciated their telling me that and. Then there was the time about just God's protection of people in their travels and their business. I know with you mentioned Sergio Rizzo, just the picture that we showed that time of his son, Josh, having that accident during COVID, during a time when finances are tough, have your 16 year old son in a, what should have been a fatal car accident and see that he was spared even though the airbags didn't deploy. That was a really, I think, highlight touching moment to visually see it with our audience. And there's just so many others that could have been from the provisions, the protections, the promptings uh, that people said that they felt were going to be important in their lives. And what over and over were two or three things. Uh, Nathaniel was one, God is with us in this. Number two, family. It's, it got to be more about the family. And number three was the community. More than ever, particularly during lockdown, is I'm having a new value on my community. Those were things that I think our speakers and our guests shared over and over. Yeah, there, there were so many that, you know, shared very personal stories. Um, some maybe about loss, some that really came very close to loss. I think about one that I did with Micah Foreman. We talked to Dave Stewart recently. We talked to Ruth Ann Weiss, maybe one of the one of the one of the best interviews of the of the series and her uh, journey with her husband and cancer. And I just I'm touched that you know all of those people they couldn't they didn't have to share those things, but they decided to sit in the chair and to let hundreds and sometimes a couple thousand people uh, hear that. But I, I know that what you would often say uh, when you would tell people when they came onto the show, you said, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's going to happen. There's going to be a Holy Spirit moment because it happens every time. And uh, I just think, uh, I think that that was, uh, that was always something we could rely on. There would be a moment when God would really speak through that person's story or through that person's takeaways. Yeah. Well, Mike, for you, what are some personal takeaways from, from this, this year yourself? Well, I guess, Nathaniel, it's a, and I had to write them down because I, I really do want to speak it clearly. I think COVID has taught me that God redeems everything. Because it was personal. It was business. It was in our office. It was in our community, it was in our church. It affected my work, my travel. It, it yet saw that God was redeeming this and making it very, very personal, but very, very helpful. And to me personally, I think that it was a sabbatical. I told my wife that in nearly 40 years now of ministry, I cannot recall being at home in my same home, same bed with my wonderful wife, waking up the same morning every day with her for that many months in a row. When I was in school and college, deputation raising money for going to the mission field, then we were on the mission field and it was always on the go. Coming back 17 years ago, it was always on the go to represent the mission of GMPI. And it's a wonderful thing, but it was a wonderful thing to just be home, to go slower and to have for me, number one was, was a sabbatical. Number two was an element of contentment. It's what our host 
um, hosting of the program, I think, showed me from these guests that just over and over said, Mike, we, we just have a contentment. And I would agree with them. So I'd say the sabbatical from travel and pressure. Number two was the contentment. Uh, and number three was we did a, kind of a cool thing because we were doing Zoom. Um, I would every week during the lockdown for three and a half months, and we've picked it up every once in a while since then, was to every Saturday do with all of my siblings. I have eight other brothers and sisters in my family, and we would every Saturday at four, we would have a Zoom meeting, and we got to be closer really during COVID than we were ever before for some years anyway. And the other thing was that on Sunday afternoons, I did it with my three children, and they're all married, and they're adults, and so had their uh, spouses on and some of our grandkids, which was always special. And so with technology, uh, it showed that it was really moving uh, from that contentment on into just, there's ways to be creatively strong with your family. Yeah, that's, that's very true. You know, I'm, as a missionary kid, I'm kind of used to the, you know, used to be Skype and then it maybe moved to Facebook Messenger. Now everybody, might have been just business calls before, but now everybody's on on Zoom. So I'm kind of used to that kind of communication, but it does seem that it's just really changed the face of how families interact. Like you, like you said, it's really kind of revolutionized that space. I, I wonder, Mike, is there, is there any particular word? It's been particularly true for me during this time that the word of God has really been living and active. So many times I've gone, I've gone to the Bible and just felt, wow, that, I think that was written for me today. And is there any particular word uh, that's kind of been put on your heart during this time? I think the word disciple making, uh, Nathaniel, um, you know, you would feel that, my, Mike, you can't travel. Oh, woe is me. Mike, you can't, what are you going to do? Be able to even raise the funds needed for the ministry. Woe is me. Um, I might get this, you know, uh, I'm no spring chicken, woe is me. I could be really, really, you know, sick. And yet in this time has been the ability to exemplify being a follower, a disciple of Jesus in how I speak, how I live, how I carry my faith and those who are on our program. But Nathaniel, there was, the, I've had more opportunities personally to talk to others about Jesus, whether it's a young man from uh, your area of influence over the years, from Taiwan to a cowboy recently uh, in Oklahoma, to a mechanic that works on my cars. Just been, and my neighbor uh, putting up even Christmas lights recently, just opportunities. People are spiritually minded and attuned. And so I'm saying the one word for me is disciple making has been that word for, for Mike Shroggy during this time. Sure. And there were several that we talked to that really dug into that idea of, of disciple making and how the church is really changing in that, in that way as well through this, through this year of having to be uh, a part, but still very much a body as, as the church goes. Um, so that kind of moves us forward. You know, we've this, uh, this series has probably, you know, lasted a lot longer than we saw it, uh, as it as when we started back in, in March. We're now in December. It's still going. We've done it either once a week or twice a week for most of the time. Um, so moving forward, what, what's Faith Greater Than Fear going to look like? Well, I'm going to share a piece of that. We're going to kind of go back to some of the things that we've visited. We're going to package some things together, maybe like discipleship, for example, give you some highlights of some really really good interviews on those particular subjects, and we'll be sharing that online. Um, but how else is Faith, Credit, and Fear going to continue, Mike? Right, I, I do. I, I agree with you. I think we've got a, a lot of nuggets that uh, um, our friends in the video editing uh, department, particularly with Craig uh, Fish, will uh, extract out and share and so forth. And then we're still looking. I mean, we're, we're not out of this... Um, season at all. And I think one of the things in my heart, is, Nathaniel, is that we're, um, a calendar can change a page, but a global pandemic doesn't read calendars. It's still going to be the same. December 31st says it's going to then be January 1. And I'm hoping 
but the people are telling us it's going to be this way is already holidays are bad and lots of times it's depressing it's lonely it's uh, feel like you're out of the mainstream of the culture you're in with family missing and so forth and i think that's even going to get exemplified a little bit more amplified a bit more you know and so i think in the coming um months we're going to have still some guests that have come on and still talk about yeah we're starting vaccinations but you know we just have come through a season where in our country 200 and what 250 280,000 lives have been lost those are 280,000 families that didn't have a loved one around that table at thanksgiving or around that table at christmas or New Year's celebration ushering in. So there's a lot of hurt. There's still a need for faith still being greater than our fears as we go into 2021. So I look forward to, to you and I having some opportunities to talk to some other hosts, that, I mean, some other guests that we'll host that uh, are going to have some good words to share. Yeah, so everybody, please look forward to more of those interviews to come. We think we're going to do that about, about monthly. I know that there's a lot more people out there we can still talk to. So please pay attention to our Facebook page, our YouTube page. We've got the podcast you can still uh, you can still listen to. And uh, check out the blog, uh, too, that goes along uh, with all the episodes on our on our website as, as well. And uh, you might see I'm, I'm wearing red if you're watching this and, and Mike there is wearing green. So hey, we're uh, we're in Christmas colors. We didn't plan it. But here we are. We did talk about singing a song, but I don't think we're going to go there. Uh, but I just wanted to say, you know, faith greater than fear. Uh, do not fear. Just going back to that refrain. And as I thought of that, it's really something you see throughout the Christmas story as well. I think spoken to Mary, spoken to Joseph, spoken to the shepherds, fear not. Do not be afraid. It's a simple message, but we just want to bring it to you. We started this series as a, maybe a timely thing for the pandemic, for the lockdown, but having faith greater than fear and perfect love that casts out all fear, that really is a timeless thing. Not only timely, but timeless. So we wanna wish you a very Merry Christmas from, from GMPI. Thank you so much for joining us. Mike, would you like to offer any last greetings before we finish up for today? Well, I just wanna close with the scripture that said, uh, Nathaniel, that it's the most Googled verse that, uh, we are told this year, and it's from Isaiah 41.10 that says, to your point, exactly, don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, and I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. So blessings to all of you. Nathaniel, thank you for being a team player with me in this. It's been an honor. Of course, uh, our great editor behind the scenes, Greg Fish, did a fabulous job as well in all of these. So thank you. Thanks, Mike. Uh, it's been great to go through this, uh, through this with you. And we'll see you all next year, 2021, for more, more Faith Greater Than Fear. Have a very Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas.